everyone. Welcome to Watercolor Wednesday. I am Bonnie Krebs, creator of Watercolor, the Art Impressions Way. And this week's project is a little cabin in the woods and we're gonna frame it with some fir boughs. So uh, this is really easy to do. Uh, it's more of a masculine card and I get asked that a lot uh, for watercolor ideas for guys for um, masculine cards. So Father's Day is coming up and I thought this would be a great um, card to make for that guy in your life. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. So in the uh, the new foliage set, this is uh, one of the few that I haven't used yet, and it's this little fur bow right here. We're going to use that. Uh, in the uh, Easy Projects B, so Easy Project B, we're going to use this little cabin right here and the little fence. So these two. We're also going to use this dry branch that's in the clay pot from the foliage set, the little tiny grass. So just this one. And in the uh, the garden wagon set, we're gonna use these tiny little dots, but if you don't have this, you can use the teeny, teeny little flowers that are in the flower set. Those also will work. And then in this one, this is project series six, we're gonna use this little tiny tree right here. Okay, so let's get started. So the way I started was to draw a little half circle. So this is about a two inch circle right here. Uh, might be a little bit more or less, uh, really doesn't matter. So just a guideline. So this is gonna help us place our image in the center and get our fur bows around the, around the image. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the little, um, the little structure and that would be the little cabin. So we're going to uh, ink this in the sepia ink it up just like this. Stamp it kind of right, uh, probably right in the center is good. So just like that. And then our first step is always to pull the color out of the line. So that's what we're gonna do. Dip your brush, pinch it off so that it's not too wet and just start by dragging this color out. So this is our really rustic little cabin and we're kind of setting it back in the woods. So it can be a lot of sepia here and just pull this color out. Okay, just like that, that looks good. So let's add some uh, color now to the roof. So it's in the wood, so it's gonna have a, a mossy look to it. So we're gonna add some green now to the roof. And just brush this on. This is number 72, and we can come back and add a little more color later too. So you can see I've left a highlight on top of the roof. That's really important to do that. Just leave a little light at the top. And let's get this little roof here too. This little overhang. And actually we can uh, add some color to the door too. This is probably a good color to add. And just brush it in just like that. So let's add some color now to the windows. And that would be with the number 86. So this is the African violet. And I'm just gonna brush this into the windows. Just like this, brush it in. We can may actually make another little window right up here. Don't be afraid to try stuff like that. And let's just go in again one more time and really make sure this is dark in here. Underneath here, this would be a shadow and we can come back in and put some more of this color in afterwards. So right now we just wanna get the basic color in here. Okay, and I'm gonna drag some of this color out here because I want this little cabin to be white, but I don't want it to be too white. So I want it to look old and rustic. And I'm just gonna come in now with my fine tip and really darken this little window that I created here. And these here too. If you think you've washed out a few lines, just put them back in. This is the number 86, works great for doing that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's move on to the next step. And that would be to add our foliages into the background. So I'm going to use the teeny tiny little uh, foliage. And I should have mentioned this, this is actually from the new foliage set. So we are using this one too. So this little, little guy right here. So we're inking it now with the 72. So we're just, we're using the same green again and stamping this in a bunch of times. I love this little foliage for these little tiny structures. It just works great for backgrounds. Cause you know, you need those tiny little stamps when you're doing these things way in the background. 
me the small little images. Okay, and you can drag some of this sepia out of here. That's okay. Pull some of this out into the background. Okay, just like that. So let's add some flowers now. And that would be these little tiny dots, just like this. And I just need a few. So this is a very large area of dots. We don't need that many because we're just setting it way back here in the background. So just a few. And put some up in here too. You know, this is out in the wilderness and things grow really big out there. So you could have some flowers growing way up high over the cabin. And we're just kind of giving the idea of it. And just dab, just dab at this. You just need a very little bit of water. And let's bring some grasses in here now into the front. And that would be the very tiny grass. This is from the original foliage set. And we're just gonna kind of walk this across. Just like this. Let's put some in under here so we don't look like everything is kind of floating in the air. Dip the brush and just pull that color out. Like so. And you can add a little more color in. You can see every time you add the color, it's gonna get a little darker and that's okay. Okay, so let's move on now. Uh, we're gonna put brush in a little water here into the foreground. So we're gonna do that with the uh, number 86. So that would be the African Violet. And just put a little of this color onto your palette. Dip your brush in water so you've got quite a bit of water here. And then just keep your hands straight and just brush Brush this color in, just straight lines, just like this, right in front of the cabin. And we'll let that dry just for a little bit. And go ahead and take some of this color now, and and actually we're going to um, add some sky in the background. So just brush this in, same color. And just brush this in all the way over to the edge of the circle. We're gonna bring our fur boughs in over the top. So that is gonna, that's gonna give us some background underneath. So just brush this all in, just like this. And the more water that you have on your brush, the softer it'll be. So you can kind of let that fade out. And now our water is dry, so we can come back in with a little more grass in here. Along here, like so. And we've created a little pond. And just pull this grass up and out. I had someone ask me why I pull, always pull the grass to the right. And that was a really good question because I never really thought about that. But I think it's because I'm right-handed and so it's natural for me to pull it up this way. But if you're left-handed, you can pull it this way or you can pull it straight up too. So we've got our little water in here. That's perfect. Let's put some trees back here in the background and that would be these tiny little ones. Just these tiny little um, little tiny branches like this, and we're actually gonna stamp that off. So we don't wanna, um, we don't wanna get this too dark. So let's ink that with the African Violet and just stamp it off a couple of times so we can just get this back in here. And let's do that one more time. That was a little light. So let's just stamp that off one time. And do that again. And get more back in here. And you can you can soften the edges if you want to, or you can just leave leave the bare branches up to you. This is way, way in the distance, so 
just kind of your preference. And so we are now ready to add our, um, our little pine boughs in here. And we're going to do that with the branch. So this is the dry branch. This is the one that comes in that uh, little pot called the clay pot set. And we're gonna ink this in two colors. So we're gonna start out with the sepia and then we're gonna ink it again with the number 72 pine green. It's gonna give us a really cool um, look on the branches. We don't want a really harsh brown and we don't want a bright green either. So we're gonna use a combination of these two. It's really fun to do that, mix colors. Don't be afraid to experiment with stuff like this because it really adds a lot. So start with the sepia. And now I'm going to ink it with the number 72. And I'm just gonna turn my paper a little bit so that I can get a better grip on here. And just ink this in a couple of times, just like that. And I'm gonna do it again. So start with the sepia. And then I'm gonna ink it with the 72. And I'm going to add more in here, just like that. And you can see that really cool color. It's kind of a, um, it's a dark green, but it's a really cool green. And it's just a really nice natural color. So again, sepia. And the green. I'm gonna turn my paper now and just come down like this, just like that. It doesn't need a lot. You're just kind of giving it the idea of a frame and it just, it adds a lot of dimension. So now let's add our, um, our little fur boughs to it. And we're gonna ink these with the 72. And I don't, I don't really need this little stem here for this one. So I'm just gonna start out by just going one, two, three on here like that. And you know, this doesn't have to be inked in solid. This is not a real thick, heavy uh, uh, foliage branch. So it's just, it's more sparse. You're gonna be able to see through it. So we don't need to, to ink the whole thing solid. So think about kind of where the ends of the, of the little uh, branches are and just kind of work your way around like that. It's okay to have these ends showing where you've kind of got dry branches. It's okay to show that where everything isn't just um, foliage. I think that looks more natural. So again, I'm doing this about three times. And now that we've come down here, you can leave these, these little branches right here, you can leave those pretty, pretty bare. And just kind of look where you need to add a little bit more. That looks good. So now let's dip our brush in water. And we're gonna add some water to this. So you want to you want to be careful adding the water to these. So make sure your brush is pretty dry. This is these are very detailed, and we want to keep the integrity of these little boughs. So we want to see the pine needles, and so kind of follow the lines just like this. Just add a little bit of water and just soften the lines. So you're not you're not dabbing as much. You're using more of a brush stroke with this. And kind of stay away from the the little the dried branches. You can add a little water to those, but they're they're kind of okay the way they are. A little more definition. So just kind of follow these lines with your brush and drag this color out. And you can see that's starting to really add a lot of dimension here. I love this little thing. It's amazing how one tiny little stamp can create this whole, um, this whole little half wreath here. That's the fun thing about this project is it's just so versatile. And, and the other great thing about it is that you'd never guess it was stamped. By the time we're finished with it, it looks like a little painting and not a group of stamps. If you have a tiny little number one brush, this is a, a really good time to use it because you can pull these little um, details out. And just kind of drag these little pine boughs, little needles. Okay, 
Alrighty, that looks good. So we are ready to add some detail back in here, and that would be the little fence. So I have cut a little post-it, so I wanna protect a little cottage, and I'm gonna put a fence clear across here, and I'm using this little roving fence. So it's this one right here, and I love it because you can use little pieces of it, or you can use the whole thing. So I love that you can do that. I am going to use a positioner. I wanna make sure that I get it in the right place. So I'm going to ink the whole thing and I'll kind of position it and see if I really need to use the whole thing. So make sure you get enough ink on here because you are stamping it over a lot of color. So let's place that up into the corner. Like that and we can position it, kind of position it over our little cabin and kind of think about where we wanna put it. That actually looks really good right there. And I think I will use the entire thing. So I'm going to um, make sure this is on here really good. Place this over the top now. And re-ink this fence because I wanna make sure I get enough ink on here. Place it back in the corner and just stamp it right over the top, just like that. And you can see that little fence in the background here. Looks really cute. Use your really tiny uh, number one brush and you can really pop this color out. You don't have to do a lot with this because you really wanna see that detail on here and it's okay to go off into the distance like that. I think that adds a lot. So let's come back here and look and see if there's anything else that we need to fix. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, let's add just a little more color to the, to the roof. Just a little more green, like this mossy color. You can see I've got the highlight on the top. You can also add some blue to it. That's gonna give you more of a shadow color. It's really fun to experiment with different colors, mixing colors. This here on the side, this can be really dark in the, in the shadows. So we can show that. So be sure to sign a date, that is the last step. And give this card to someone special on Father's Day or just for no reason. You will make somebody's day for sure. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you all next week. Thank you.